Hannah, is it okay if we talk about, you know, the negative comments? Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Is it okay if I talk to your eight-year-old daughter about the negative comments she receives online? Are you out of your f***ing mind? What? Hey, eight-year-old who's struggling with intense anxiety. Are you good with talking about the negative comments? Because there's so many. There are so many. We just got to bring it up. I mean, this is just crazy. I haven't seen a comment section that looks like this before. What the f***? is wrong with you this is why you do not have eight-year-olds go on podcasts this is why eight-year-olds do not go on social media they do not belong on here they do not belong knowing about any of this stuff they should not be exposed to this stuff how many times do i have to say this stuff like do people just not get it hello everyone so today we're going to be talking about the very controversial account that is called My Arfid Life. It's about an eight-year-old girl named Hannah and is co-run by her mother. I just wanna do a disclaimer right at the top of this video that this is a very complex topic. There's a lot of moving parts. It's very nuanced. So I say that so my intentions do not get misconstrued in this video. My intention here always is for the best interest of this child and for other children who may be medically complex and sharing their journeys online. And while I do acknowledge that this is a very complex topic, for me, it is very clear that this should not be happening and this account should not exist. Okay, I have very strong feelings about this. It seems that a lot of other people do as well. And while I do believe definitely that ARFID does require awareness, the way that they are going about spreading awareness is what I do not agree with, okay? So I just have to say that at the top of the hour because I don't want anyone to misconstrue what I'm saying. And let's be honest, there are a lot of people who love this account and love to see that this is being spread and love to see the awareness that this account brings and there is a lot of good also that comes out of seeing this girl document her journey so I think that's where things get very difficult for people when they're trying to synthesize how do I feel about this you know I see a lot of good coming out of it but I'm also seeing something very bad happen and it's coming at the expense of this eight-year-old child who cannot give informed consent about whether or not she wants to share her journey. She can't make that decision at eight years old, right? I mean, think about where you were at eight years old. You probably were not online with millions of followers, were you? So anyway, that is my disclaimer. Let's get into the video. And by the end of this, you can decide for yourself what you think about this situation. All right, so many of you may have never heard of ARFID before. So I'm actually gonna have Hannah explain in her own words what ARFID is. Hi, my name is Hannah and I'm eight years old. I was diagnosed with ARFID. It's a phobia or fear of food. I'm afraid to try foods that I'm not familiar with because I'm afraid something bad is going to happen. I have my safe foods that I eat and it's very hard for me to try new foods. I'm very sensitive to certain smells, textures, and how food looks. My brain automatically makes me feel like I'm going to gag or throw up. I am currently in therapy to overcome my fear of food. I hope my videos will help you understand ARFID and help those who are struggling with similar issues. Make sure to like and subscribe for more information about ARFID. It is often mistaken as being simply like a picky eater. It's much more severe than that and it has more implications than that. From what I've read, it seems to affect a lot of children, but a lot of adults do suffer from this as well. Like she said at the end, she said, like and follow my journey for more. Okay, well, there's a couple different ways that you can follow her journey, okay? So she's on TikTok right here. So she's got 10K followers on TikTok. She's got 60K followers on Facebook. She's got 6K subscribers over on YouTube. And then finally over on Instagram, that is where she has her biggest audience and it is 1.4 million followers. And it says Hannah's ARFID journey. Hannah and her mom are sharing her journey to recovery, spreading awareness about ARFID. This is a huge platform. This account had a meteoric rise because it was only started, believe it or not, in January of this year is when this account started. And it's already at 1.4 million followers. Now, if you're on Instagram, this has probably popped up for you at some point, and you might be wondering like, what, what is this? Why is this popping up? It has blown up. So this account posts very frequently. I think they post like twice a day. The whole idea is she's trying foods on camera. She's trying to get over her fear of food. So she's trying new things and documenting the journey. Most of the time she doesn't like the food, but she's trying to hopefully find more foods that she can add to her safe list. So this is an example of a video you might see on there and the type of content that this account is putting out. This morning I didn't feel like trying a new food, so I'm gonna try one of my safe foods, uh, which is goldfish. I've been eating goldfish 
ever since I was um, a little girl. I only like the original goldfish because I don't like the extra cheesy ones or the colored ones. Goldfish is always something I can count on when I'm hungry because it makes me feel safe. I can only eat the original goldfish. I don't like the store ones. I know it's not the healthiest option, but at least I'm getting some calories in. Okay, so this is obviously an example of something she likes to eat, but most of the content on here is her trying foods that she ends up not liking. So let's watch a video example of that. I'm gonna be trying the white cheddar Annie's mac and cheese. Last time I tried the mac and cheese, I said I really didn't like it and I wouldn't try it again for a long time, but today I'm gonna be trying it again and I'm being brave. <coughs> it smells horrible. Here I go. We only used half of the cheese because I didn't want it to be too cheesy, but the texture is too mushy. I like the noodles, but I really don't like the cheese. This one doesn't have an aftertaste and it's definitely better than the other one. I rate these five out of 10 and I think I might be able to eat these again. So as you can see here, this is a distressing process for this child. I honestly feel personally uncomfortable when I watch these videos and see how much distress that she usually is in having to try these new foods. Typically all of the videos follow a very similar formula. So she says, this is the food I'm gonna be trying. And usually it's a food that she's scared of. She, she might explain why she doesn't like to eat that food when the last time she tried it was. Then she does three bites. So she tries to keep herself to like a three bite rule before she decides how she feels about it. That's sort of the situation here. So obviously you may be wondering, well, who's running this account? <laughs> okay, because obviously an eight year old doesn't know how to like cross post to TikTok and YouTube and Facebook and things like that. Well, obviously it's the mom. This is one of the first videos that they posted. This is from the mom's point of view. Most of the videos like appear to be filmed by the daughter, but obviously they're like cut and edited and things and spliced together. So obviously there's an adult behind the scenes. So it, it is the mom, it's a mommy run account. And the mom is the one that writes all the captions as well. It's just sort of weird because she's like writing it as if the daughter wrote it, but it's the mom typing it. And these are some of the hashtags. So this is in my opinion, why the virality of these videos, I think that it's very interesting. So hashtag ARFID, hashtag ARFID awareness, malnutrition, calories, weight, weight gain, SPD, sensory processing disorder, kids eat <laughs> awareness, underweight, growth, nutrition, anxiety, underweight, growth, nutrition, picky eating, picky eaters, safe food, trauma, phobia, fear, yogurt, struggle, flavors, scared, recovery, warrior, conquer. These are, in my opinion, problematic hashtags that are attracting people to your page, your eight-year-old daughter's page, okay? And as we know, the daughter ain't writing those. All right, so here is Hannah and her mom. So the mom's going to explain why they started this Instagram account, okay? Because I find it to be very odd to start an Instagram account, you know, exploiting your daughter's that's my personal opinion, and that's what I believe that it is. Let's not get it twisted. Let's hear what the mom has to say. Here's the origin story of why they started it. Hi, I'm Hannah's mom, and we decided to come on here to give you guys a little bit of background about our family and also why we started this page. So we are a family of five. Hannah is the youngest of three. She has two older brothers. All three of them have very different eating habits. Our oldest son has autism and he was a picky eater, a uh, typical picky eater. He um, didn't start eating until he was three. He struggled with textures and lots of sensory issues. Also, he would drink a gallon of milk every day, but would refuse to eat food. So we started him in OT and he did therapy and it was really successful and he finally started to eat. And then we have Hannah, who was also a very picky eater. And we were hoping that she would follow her brother's footsteps and overcome it. Um, we did 
therapy with her as well in hopes that we would see progress and it was a very painful experience. It was very traumatic for her. Had very bad anxiety going mm -hmm. to therapy um, and it just became too overwhelming for me and I decided that this was doing more harm than good and so we stopped doing that. But when she was doing therapy, one of the things that motivated her to eat things was us saying things to her like, let's take a video and send it to your therapist or let's send a video and send it to your doctor and so she would do it for the camera and of course i wasn't sending it anywhere but it gave her that motivation so she admits here that she was taking like fake videos of her daughter to try to get her to eat which i have no problem with i mean it's a white lie but she actually wasn't even sending them anywhere but it was still motivating her daughter which she admits right here i think the logical next question that you have to ask is well, what difference does it make if you say, hey, let's film a video for Instagram and then you never post it, right? Well, let's see. So we started her on the Insure Plus and it was a struggle. Um, again, because there's so many texture issues involved that it was hard for you to get it down. And we would try to time it and see if she could beat her last record. And then the thought came to me and I said, why don't we record you drinking the Ensure and we'll send it to your therapist? Um, because that was motivating for her back when she was doing OT. So that's what we did. And then the idea came to me and I thought, oh, why don't we start an Instagram account where we can share this with our friend, my friends and family um, and she'll have a support system and maybe she'll be motivated to do this for them. This doesn't make any sense with the things that we'll find out later, but just remember that this was originally made for friends and family. Questions that come to mind. Why not make this a private account? And why are we doing hashtag our fit awareness? We're doing hashtag malnutrition, hashtag I mean, obviously, you're, if you're doing hashtags, you want this to get out to more than just your friends and family. If you're cross-posting this to YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, this is not just a friends and family situation. And why can you not just also text them the videos? Is that so hard either? So a lot of this does not make sense. It's very fishy to me. And that's the other thing at school, she's had you know the yard duty say to her like, wow, who packs your lunches? Do you pack your lunches? Why are they so unhealthy? Where's the healthy food? And you don't say stuff like that to a child who struggles. There's things that you shouldn't say to a child I agree. Why put her online where people will inevitably say things about her? her I just, I don't understand the logic behind that. I don't. I don't think using your daughter as the paragon for ARFID awareness is the right idea. Let adults who have ARFID speak about their situation. Let them do the videos because it's not fair to put your daughter in potentially in harm's way and have her deal with the side effects of being online, which is hate comments, which you can't control. I don't think that that's the right decision personally. You don't know their history. You don't know why they're eating what they're eating. Um, and things like that would get her really upset. And so, you know, I thought if we do this platform on, on Instagram for friends and family, maybe they'd have a better understanding as to why she is the way she is. And maybe they would think twice before they would make any comments like that to her. And so that's kind of how we started it. And so we filmed a few videos and then before we knew it, it went viral. Um, we had no idea. It was fascinating to all of us because we just didn't understand like what happened. Um, but it's been an amazing experience. Um, she, Hannah has progressed so much in this last month since we started this journey. Parents asking their kids to do something, it's not so easy, but when you're, doing it for the camera for thousands of people who are cheering you on and giving you that motivation it gives you you know that reason to do it this is my personal opinion but i don't think that teaching your kids to look for validation in strangers is 
the right move. That's just me personally, okay? And like I said, you know how I feel about this, okay? You know how I feel about this situation. I don't like it. I'm not a fan of it. I don't think this is right. And I also think it's really not right to be like, oh, I'm gonna do this for them, for these strangers online. You don't know these people. The foundation of which this whole Instagram account is built on makes no sense. Oh, we, we had no idea this was gonna go viral. We didn't know all of a sudden it's going viral. Like, why did you not lock this account? Something is very off here. It appears that I'm not the only person that feels like there's something off here. I mean this in no negative way, but I'm a pediatric nurse and I see many kids with many presentations. I've noticed in every single video, she doesn't blink at all, or maybe will blink once the whole time. This makes me think she's reading from a script. So I'm curious if note cards are being used to remember what to say, or if mom is feeding the dialogue. And this has been something I've seen multiple times in the comments where people have wondered if she's reading off a script saying these are not things that eight year olds really say. I personally find it a little odd when she says things like, like and subscribe for more information. It's like, that's not typical for an eight year old to say. It's just, there's things that seem off, right? The mom comments back and says, no, she actually isn't. Mom does not have ARFID, so I cannot relate to her, nor can I explain how she feels. She is documenting her own experience and feelings about foods. I am also learning a lot myself through this process. Another comment, I'm all to recovery, but I don't agree with posting it all over social media. The parent that runs this account shouldn't be exposing their child's all over the internet. Kids at school are mean, and if they see this, she's at a higher risk of being bullied, and when she's older, she will be known as the Instagram girl who had ARFID and posted about it. I honestly feel bad for her because even though it might seem fine to do it now, there definitely could be consequences for doing this in the future. There just isn't any point in doing this. And then if you see at the bottom, day two of asking to do fentanyl. Somebody commented, I hope the mom behind this account realizes she's an awful parent, 376 likes. Somebody commented, this is some Gypsy Rose shit, SMH. This is just not right. Mother needs to put down the phone, go in timeout, no more social media for a while. Somebody commented, your mom makes your life miserable with 4,000 in likes. Poor kid, your parents failed you, 2,500 likes. Does she have anxiety or is she being told she does? 5,000 likes. The mom should be ashamed of herself, 1,500 likes. Someone commented, putting your child crying as the thumbnail is not it. That's another thing that I get very confused about. I'm not an Instagrammer but I don't know if you could choose your thumbnails, but a lot of time the thumbnails are her clearly in distress, crying. I just don't know what's going on. Poor kid being brainwashed by her parents. This is known as Munchausen's by proxy, just for IG likes and attention, sick parents. All right, so here's another video that was posted online with help of her mother. I used to like hot dogs, but I stopped eating them, so I wanna try them again. This was the only brand I used to eat, so I wanna try this brand today. Here I go. It's pretty good and I ate it all. I don't like condiments or a bun with my hot dog. And I only like my hot dog boiled. It can't have any grill marks on it. I'm gonna try to eat this for dinner for the next seven days. The flavor is good. The skin of the hot dog is kind of tough, but the middle is really soft and there's no aftertaste. 8.5 out of 10, you should try this. So here's the caption, which I just, I personally find this to be a little bit odd. And I've noticed this on several posts. We'll take a look at other posts as well. By the way, take a look at the how, how many likes are on there. 180,000 likes. These videos are getting millions and millions of views. Every single one of them, by the way. Does a whole caption about, you know, the hot dogs, whatever, and then tags the brand. Says, I recommend you try these. I think the tagging of the brand, I find to be very odd. And in fact, they did end up getting the attention of the brand. It says, hi, Hannah, thanks for the love. And then everyone in the comments is like, please tell me you're gifting her stuff. So, okay, this is my opinion. This is evidence right here that this account is quickly becoming more than just documenting a journey for friends and family, okay? I think it's obviously way beyond that, but I think tagging the brands, like you would only tag the brands if you want attention from these brands, whether you wanna try to get a sponsorship, whether you want attention from them, you want like them to send you free stuff or whatever. Like, I think that this is capitalizing off of your because otherwise you just don't post and you just move on. You're like, whatever. If they find you naturally, then okay. But it's every video. The mom who's writing the captions is tagging the brand. Here's another one, okay? It says, so goldfish at goldfish smiles is something that 
doesn't give me anxiety. It is my safe food. I can only eat the original, blah, blah, blah. Who else loves goldfish? And she tags goldfish. So obviously wanting to create sort of a relationship and then they end up commenting. They say, thank you for sharing your story and being a loyal fan, which gets obviously a bunch of likes. Look down below. I hope the adult operating this account turns off and limits the comments soon because IG comments are disgusting. This one has 8,000 likes. This is so sad. When I become a parent, I seriously hope to never fail this bad. Here's another one. I like at General Mills Cinnamon Toast Crunch cereal. When I saw these Cinnamon Toast Crunch treats at the store, I really wanted to try them. They smell really good, like at Cinnabon or Cinnamon Roll. They taste just like the cereal but chewy eight out of ten i actually finished the whole bar i could eat these again guys are we kidding just this once please just see this for what it is this is beyond trying to raise awareness for this i never tried away from a horse today i decided to try the whatever that is the chocolate actually tastes a lot like at nutella so that was really good they remind me a lot of at twix except there's no caramel like I could eat these again. What are your favorite wafers? You're asking things like, what are your favorite wafers? You want to encourage engagement on posts, which I'm not understanding if this is just an account you simply made for friends and family, okay? But you're trying to like encourage people to comment and to try to encourage brands to interact with you. Like this is going far beyond this. So I can say, all right, so this is where things start to look really suspicious to me at least okay and it starts here the mom had the daughter go on a podcast her eight-year-old daughter go on a podcast with these two adult women one of them you might recognize as the daughter from the long island medium and her friend who i don't know her friend hannah the eight-year-old and her mother go on this podcast and chat with these ladies okay this is the podcast. What is our fit? A chat with Hannah. Let's watch this, shall we? Hannah, you share different foods that you're trying on social media. When did you start your Instagram or your social media page? And what made you want to share how you're eating and trying all these new foods for everyone to see? Uh, I started around like start of January, I think. Uh, and I wanted to do the Instagram account to get more motivation and try foods. Hold on a minute. Who wanted to start the Instagram account? You or your mom? <laughs> I think we know the answer to that. And do you find that it's helpful for you? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. There's just something about you that I gravitate towards. You're such an old soul. I don't know if you heard of that many times <laughs> or if you think she is because she's she's so intelligent. And for somebody at eight years old to recognize this and be brave enough to just share her story, is it's amazing. And, and I watch her videos and... A lot of them make me smile. Whether whether you don't put it on your safe foods list or whether it's on your safe foods list, I'm, I'm smiling ear to ear watching you. I actually watch it with my friend from work because her daughter, she now thinks that she has this because of you. So um, wow. it's interesting because like you said, it's been around, but it wasn't actually classified as so especially, you know, in today's world, social media is the way to get the word out. So I think it's so brave of you and so amazing that you are sharing your journey because you're shining light onto this and allowing other people to be able to get diagnosed and to be able to get the proper help for something that maybe they would have never thought was a thing before. So you are a very, very brave girl. This is one of the reasons why I do say this is a complex topic. There's a lot of nuance to it. There is a lot of good that has come out of this account. I will acknowledge that for sure. A lot of people who did not have a name for what they were experiencing are now able to place themselves or ask questions about this or figure out a treatment plan and ways to recover. But they're having these conversations, which are, first of all, it's super weird and parasocial to say you're an old soul. It's pretty creepy, to be honest, especially an adult who's saying it to a child that you don't know, and especially an eight-year-old. I think it's sort of actually not surprising that someone online would have a parasocial relationship sort of with this child that they don't know. And I think that in a way she is having to act older than her age because she's forced into this space which is occupied mostly by adults. This is an adult space. You are not supposed to be on Instagram. Let's make that very clear. If you are under the age of 13, and I think that you shouldn't even be on there if you're 13, I think you should be much older than that even. So, you know, this is a space occupied by adults for adults by adults. That's why I always say kids shouldn't be on here. Kids should not be on here, especially based on some of the comments that you've already seen of course, which we're gonna get into even more of them. But I think that saying things like this, having her on a podcast, what the hell are we doing? Seriously, having an eight-year-old on a podcast, talking to her and saying, you're so brave for documenting your journey. It's not her choice. You know that, right? She's not the one oh, editing an iMovie and putting them up with cap cut, you know, for TikToks. She's not editing, she's not doing, you know she's not doing this, right? 
She has no idea how to do this. She doesn't have access to a phone if it's not for her mother, right? You know this? Okay. So saying like, you're so brave for doing this, it's super parasocial weird and people should not be having this relationship with your kids. And also I have to say, once again, this is not her cross to bear. She does not have to be the spokesperson for Arfid. She doesn't. And I don't think that she should be either. I think that this is a case where yes, there are benefits, there are positives. Yes, people are finding out that they have Arfid and they are getting diagnosed and they feel more seen and heard and things like that. But it's also doing, I think in my opinion, much more damage to this child than it is doing good. A lot of adults as well now making Instagram accounts because of Hannah. And I think it's amazing that she can help people of all ages. Just, you know, a kid can understand, but an adult can understand as well. And Hannah, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be an author. An author? You're <laughs> going to be an amazing author. <laughs> Victoria's <laughs> crying again. <laughs> so she, she did write a book. Um, she did write a book about ARFID for kids. Um, we're in the process of getting it published. Oh. That was one of the ideas that somebody recommended early on Amazing. because there's not much out there and it's really nice to hear it from the perspective of a child who, you know, lives with it every day. So um, it'll be, you know, a kid's book that hopefully will be out soon. Well, please, really please let us know when it is so we can share it because Hannah, you are doing absolutely amazing things and you can do anything that you put your mind to and keep sharing your journey because you are touching way more lives than I think you realize and bringing so much light to a <laughs> that needs it and needs the exposure. Thank you. This is just the beginning of your journey. She actually went, uh... Uh, hold on. I just have to say something before this. The two hosts were trying to end the conversation. They're like, well, thanks so much for sharing your journey. Keep going, you're amazing. And then the mom goes, well, actually, so wait, here's what she says, actually. Uh, she started about a year ago, she started her business, a slime making business. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, so she was a little entrepreneur from very early on and she was on a mission to make that slime and go sell it on the corner. So hold on a minute. So it's her idea to start the Instagram account. It's her idea to write a book and publish a book. And it's also her idea to do a slime making business. Okay. Would you make slime and take all the profits and donate it to your Arfrid funds? So that's part of the plan, right? Arfrid slime. It's a sensory, it's a tactile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Color. Uh, we're, we're planning to do, um, you know, merchandise um, and donate oh. part of the proceeds to the, to the merchandise. Got it. A, a nonprofit. We were thinking of doing like friendship bracelets that have, I mean, Hannah and I made some, right? Have... I think that's good, by the way. I think it's great to donate money, of course, 100%. But we got to read between the lines here with what's going on. Okay, mer we're doing merch, books, slime, bracelets. Um, yeah. Um, so that's definitely, you know, we're, we're just, it's, it's literally been six weeks. Yesterday right. was six weeks. I know you told so... me, um, because I was like, oh my God, you're almost up to a million followers, and you're like, it's been six weeks. And I'm like, that is insane. So, Privately, they're having conversations where they're like, oh my God, we're about to hit a million, you know? <gasps> like, I thought this was an account, I'll say it again, that was started for friends and family. And now it's a multifaceted business at this point. Okay, and it's only been six weeks and they're already doing, they're already doing all this. Yeah, so we're, it's just, so much has happened so quickly and I knew nothing about the social media world. You know, people would always say, oh, you get paid per views, but it doesn't work that way. No, and people I wish. Are totally, yeah, they have no idea. <laughs> say, no, I wish, they said. So so right now they're chatting openly about, I wish we were paid per views. What? What? Why are we talking about getting paid for showcasing your daughter's <laughs> You expect to get paid for that? You want to get paid for that? and make more money, wouldn't the incentive to be then to exploit it even more until the end of time? Like what? You yeah, but that's, over a million dollars. Yeah. That, that's not how you hear the daughter in the background, she goes, well, we would have over a million dollars by now. That works. So yeah. um, we just figured, you know, since she has such a huge following, it would be amazing to, and, and so many of these people are so supportive. So there's no ARFID awareness in the US. There is ARFID awareness in the- That's not true, by the way. That's not true. Um, and that's it. And so it would be really nice to have that here. I mean, we were thinking of ways of how we could, you know, collect, you know, not collect money, but get donations. But yeah. she has some pretty big people following her. I who... am sh bragging. Okay, here we go. We're about to name drop some celebrities. Sure. I mean, Demi Lovato posted on her post and, you know, she struggled with. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Um, and so Kelly Slater commented on her post. Rosie no. O'Donnell's one of her biggest fans because her daughter has ARFID. Can I also. Say one thing. Okay, first of all, this is what I picture in the background. You know Demi Lovato post, Compton, right? You know Rosie O'Donnell, Compton, right? Kelly Slater, I don't even know who that is. By the way, she's chosen to go on a podcast. Let's not get it twisted here. On a podcast with a daughter of a celebrity, the Long Island medium, Teresa Caputo. 
So let's not get it twisted. This is a media tour. This is a media tour. Wow, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, there's, you know, there's a lot of big people following her and I feel like we have to take advantage of this yes. opportunity and really like see what we can do with it and, and make a difference. Take advantage of this opportunity. Think about that. Let's take advantage of this opportunity. What opportunity is that you ask? Oh, my daughter's <laughs> Let's take advantage of it. When people speak, listen to what they're saying. They will tell you, they will reveal themselves to you in due time. And it's happened very quickly in this case. Like you said, this is just the beginning. Literally yeah. just the beginning. Yeah, so we created our logo. And well, she's gonna start wearing some of the clothes in her videos to amazing, you know, and, amazing. Yeah, we'll donate some of the profits from the publishing. Yes, yeah, definitely. Let us know when the the book, the nonprofit is all done, the merch, everything that you have going on. Let us know oh, so we can share and to like really you. get the word out for you. I like the fact that we have this opportunity to talk to you guys and explain our story, and I think it would be cool for her followers to be able to hear it. Also, um, my perspective since. I I'm not on social, you know, I'm not on her. Once again, are you guys listening? It would be really cool for, you know, people to hear my perspective. Because people don't get to hear my perspective. The mom, like, people aren't hearing my perspective enough. So it's cool for people to be able to do that. Who is this about? Okay, who is this about? So let me just run you through, okay? Because this is a full-fledged media tour that this eight-year-old is on because she unfortunately has been afflicted with this which I would not wish on anybody. I would not wish it on any child. It's horrible. So she's doing two videos a day. She's publishing and writing a book. She's doing a slime making business. She's making bracelets. She's wearing merch. They have a logo. She's gonna be wearing it in her videos. She's gonna be connecting with celebrities. She's on podcasts. She's posting on four different platforms, cross posting. Um, We've lost the plot here. Okay, we've lost the plot. But by the way, it gets worse. All right, so let's get into some real talk here. The comments that are on these videos. If this is not one of the loudest arguments for why this account should not be existing, I don't know what else to say. So if you are not aware, by the way, Instagram is probably, in terms of apps, probably one of the worst apps out there like in terms of like the community down there it's just people comment whatever the hell they want to comment it's probably worse than TikTok at this point it's definitely worse than youtube because on youtube you actually cannot comment on content made for kids that features kids heavily features kids so it's actually disabled over on youtube so you would think that that would cause you to pause and be like oh there's a reason why these comments are disabled on youtube but it's not disabled over on TikTok, instagram and facebook Okay, so I would say, in my opinion, Instagram is probably the worst in terms of comments and hostility, toxicity. We're about to get into some of that right now, okay? So here's a comment. I wonder if you read some of the comments to Hannah. The mom replies, I read the supportive comments to her. We'll never know the, the true answer to that. The truth is, is that one day she will be able to, if these comments are not disabled. And that will be a very, very sad, Sad day. We try and couscous. I don't know what it is, but I know that you guys recommended it. This is the Parmesan flavored one since I like Parmesan. And it smells like the mac and cheese. Here I go. That was horrible, the taste won't get out my mouth. I don't like the texture, it's too grainy and it got stuck all over my mouth and lips. I rate this a three out of 10. I barely got through it and I didn't think I could do it. This texture is not for me. I don't think I'm gonna be eating this again. Like and follow my outfit journey to see me try new foods. So obviously you guys just saw that video. So here's some of the comments. No, we recommended the Carolina Reaper. 6,300 likes. LOL, she started crying. This is hilarious. She pisses me off, I ain't even gonna lie. 2,500 likes. Can we stop making shit up and just calling kids picky? 800 likes. Today I'm gonna be trying cherries. This is a really scary food for me because they look really mushy. A long time ago I had a nightmare about cherries and it's really scared me since the day that happened. Because I'm scared of seeds, these are pitted cherries and they're red, so it makes it even more hard for me. Here I go.
That was one of the hardest foods for me to do. It tasted like a dry and mushy grape. It was too chewy and squishy. I rate this a 3 out of 10. I don't think I'll be eating this anytime soon, but at least it's coming off my fear food list. Like and follow my ARFA journey to see me try new foods. These videos just make me uncomfortable. I don't like watching them, but uh, here's the comments. A nightmare about cherries, dead emoji. Almost 30,000 likes. Bring back the bullying button, 3,000 likes. Who the F has nightmares about cherries, 1,100 likes. How does food scare you, 4,000 likes. Somebody commented, have you tried cocaine before? If you want this kid to stop overreacting, button, 143 likes. Just eat the damn donut, you make me mad. The eye rolling is really annoying, just eat it. No sh it smells like cinnamon. This kid makes me mad. If you hate this kid button, 6,200 likes. In the middle of it, I F with you, Hannah. Keep doing your thing, G. <laughs> Liked by the author. So the mom likes that, but leaves these other comments up. Saying, if you hate this kid, like this. Okay? You're picky. You don't have a d Ungrateful. What? Why are you not deleting all of these? Imagine making your kid go on camera just because they're a picky eater. Stop biting the spoon. Day three of asking to do fentanyl, just starve. Somebody commented, I really wish these comments were disabled. It's disgusting to sit here and bully a child over a for some likes and attention. The mom likes the comment that is responding to this saying, most of the comments are very supportive and Hannah has found the support really encouraging to try new foods. These are strangers, please. I keep scrolling and all I see is people telling her to try drugs and womp up, womp, stop crying, it's disgusting. And the mom comments, we love the amazing support from so many wonderful people. The awful comments I scroll past and block them out. It's very eye-opening though. Definitely won't let my kids have social media for a long time. Your kid already has social media. Your eight-year-old's on social media with their own account. Your kid's on podcasts. Your kid's on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. There aren't really any left that she's not on. What are you talking about? And you don't block out most of the comments. And there's people asking you, well-meaning people that are asking you, Please disable these. Once again, teaching your child to seek validation in other strangers online. No, 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 no. Slippery slope. You know, I watch you, I know this is like so weird. I feel like I'm like a stalker, but <laughs> <laughs> I watch you so often and I love your facial expressions. I love the way you think about if you like it or you don't. And my favorite is, is when you grab your drink. And as soon as that drink is grabbed, I'm like, that is a total non-safe food. And the fact that you still continue to eat it mm -hmm. after that grab of drink, I'm like, this girl's going to keep going. I'm like, good for her. And you, you make sure that you try it three times. And I told your mom this the other day, but I cried during your honeydew video. You cried and you did it four times. Not only did you do it three times, you did it four times. And I'm like, this girl is really motivated and you're doing an amazing, amazing, amazing job at spreading the word and the light and, you know, making people feel comfortable about their, their own journey that they're going through. And I just, I, I, I love you for you that. You know, what's, what's interesting is, you know, a lot of people make comments about her facial expressions. Um, oh, trust me. I get so angry at people. They're like, oh. I, Hannah, is it okay if we talk about, you know, the negative comments? Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, is it okay if I talk to your eight-year-old daughter about the negative comments she receives online? Are you out of your f***ing mind? What? Hey, eight-year-old who's struggling with <laughs> and has intense anxiety. Are you good with talking about the negative comments? Because there's so many. There are so many. We just got to bring it up. I mean, this is just crazy. I haven't seen a comment section that looks like this before. So we got to talk about it. What the f*** is wrong with you this is why you do not have eight-year-olds go on podcasts this is why eight-year-olds do not go on social media they do not belong on here they do not belong knowing about any of this stuff they should not be exposed to this stuff how many times do i have to say this stuff like do people just not fucking get it and these are your own kids these are your own kids that are suffering and then you have adults doing this to them, triggering the hell out of them, giving them more anxiety, more to worry about, exposing them to a world that they shouldn't be exposed to. First of all, I want to say, ignore all the hate because <laughs> they are nobody. They have nothing better to do and you're helping people. So don't ever stop and don't let people take you down. Those people are nobody, honey. Just don't listen to all the hate as there is a lot of it. Don't listen to all the hate, eight-year-old girl. This is like stuff where you're having this conversation with another adult. You do not have this conversation with an eight-year-old. I mean, this is actually insane, wild, wild, wild. I don't know how you can listen to 
like this and still think that this is like, oh yeah, good idea. Let's keep going with this. As a young person, this would send me into a tailspin because you don't understand who these people are. There's people hating on me. You don't understand why are these people hating on what I'm doing? What am I doing wrong? I just want to say one other thing as well. This is a lot of stress that this child is under completely separate from just being on the internet and then add this level of it where there's people like millions of people following you and watching you and commenting about you and saying gross things about you. It, it's just, this is just sad. Children are not able to consent to this. Okay, I'm sorry. They should not be the spokesperson for these. <coughs> Your parents should not be posting this. Honestly, I find this whole account to be very sad and disturbing, okay? Especially videos like this, all right? This one was actually flagged on Instagram as sensitive content. Happy St. Patrick's Day. In honor of St. Patrick's Day, I'm gonna be trying a green food even though it's one of my fear colors. And I'm gonna make it even more challenging by trying guacamole even though I really didn't like avocados. It smells like avocado. I go. She's sobbing crying, by the way, in this video. The texture was way too mushy and the flavor tasted way too much like avocado. The smell and the color of it really had me bothered and I didn't want to eat it. This was really hard for me to do and I'm super proud of myself and I'm glad that it's over with. Like and follow my orphan journey to see me try new foods. Since today's pie day, I decided to be brave and try pie. I definitely didn't want to do the cherry pie so I chose the peach pie. This is a freshly baked pie from a bakery near my house. It smells bad. I'm really nervous because there's fruit in here and I don't know how it will taste. Here I go. That last bite really made me feel sick. And I really know what I didn't like about it, but it was just too much. It's too wet and mushy and I had a really hard time swallowing it. Why would anyone want to see stuff like this? I'm sorry, it's like, I, I just don't want to see kids crying online. Not if I can help it, no, I don't. It's so sad, it's uncomfortable. I'm eating my safe food now, I write more in the caption. Here's the caption. I decided I wanted to try pie. I definitely didn't want the cherry pie, so I settled on the peach pie. I was anxious about trying it because I knew there was fruit in it and I didn't know how it would taste. It was horrible. I don't know how I got through three bites, but somehow I did. The texture was awful. It was way too wet and mushy and I struggled to swallow it. It made me gag and very nauseous. I don't know how I didn't throw up. My coping techniques really came into good use and I was able to talk myself through it. My mom and dad ate the pie with me and then uh, they didn't throw up, so I told myself I would be okay. I rate this a two out of 10. This is probably one of the worst textures I've tried during this journey. I rewarded myself with one of my trusted safe foods at Goldfish. Oh, by the way, can we just take a look at something 1 million likes 1 million likes on a video of your child crying I don't know what there is to like about that video I don't I genuinely do not know what there is to like about that video if someone was like Hannah try this we'll do it this way and then you're like no and they're like how about we do it this way and they kept pushing you and pushing you and that made you more anxious right yeah yeah and when you when you feel anxious what are your feelings when you when you feel anxious like what normally happens can you identify it does your heart race do you sweat do you get do you just cry? Yeah, I cry. You cry. She admits that when she's feeling anxious, she's crying. Well, she's crying in a ton of her videos. Why are we posting videos where children are under this much duress? I, I just I keep having to ask the question because it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't see what the benefit of this is. I don't. It's not appropriate. Why does the world need to see this? Here's a video that the mom actually posted, and this makes me sick to my stomach. There's something wrong with this person. Okay, I'm just letting you know right now, there's something wrong. If you think that posting this is okay, and by the way, this video is still up, but the comments are disabled, believe it or not. Come on, Hannah. No. Just come try the yogurt. No. If you don't like it, you don't have to eat it. Just come try it. I don't want to eat it. Okay, but you can at least try it. But how do you know if you're going to like it or not if you don't try it? Because it smells bad. It's strawberries. You like strawberries. Not mixed with things. Okay, can you just come try it, please? She's fully 
sobbing in that video, by the way. Here's the caption. I don't like trying things that have a lot of flavor, especially when flavors get mixed. Every day is a struggle with eating. Some days are better than others. Trying food gives me so much anxiety and fear. I really wish I didn't have to be so scared of the one thing that I know keeps me alive. I have to stay positive and keep telling myself that I can overcome this. Hashtag ARFID, ARFID awareness. <laughs> malnutrition calories picky eater phobia like what 64,000 likes by the way disturbing by the way i have some of the comments before it was deleted okay sad that you're posting this poor kid 3700 likes why why are you filming this why are you posting this she's obviously struggling 4300 likes go and try the yogurt and then it's an expletive okay not good parenting Agreed. If you post your child in distress online, you suck. Too much pressure. That's not how you work with ARFID. This poor kid is being exploited for views. This is so sad. What the F is wrong with you? It's unbelievable you would post something like this of your child. Oh my God, this mother, shame on you. Why is you posting this? These are other parents saying this. I just saw an older video of you videoing your daughter having a mental breakdown and posting it from her perspective. This is starting to feel like exploitation. And even if she is saying she's okay with the cameras online, that doesn't mean she can fully consent. And I really hope that this actually helps her and isn't a cash grab power trip by mom. So I would be remiss if I did not bring this up because this is an important element of this topic. And part of my argument of why I don't think that this account should operate anymore, at the very, very least, this account should be paused until she is an adult and she can make that decision for herself. These are certain things that I find to be dangerous and very concerning when the mother is giving away information like this about her daughter. So someone commented, I'd love a health update. She commented back, she has gained one pound since starting this journey, which is fantastic. Her energy levels have definitely improved. She's eating more new things than she ever has liked outside of her safe foods. Her confidence has grown a lot. She is happy and smiling more. She's been going to the bathroom more regularly since she started to incorporate more fiber into her diet and she is definitely moving in the right direction. It's a process, but any progress is so much better than no progress. I don't think that you should ever be talking about your children's bowel movements, bathroom habits. This is not information that you share. This is a textbook overshare. We have seen that with other people who have documented their potty training journey with their kids and um, sharing things about my, oh, my daughter's first period. This is not a far jump from that, okay? This is very, very close, if not the same thing. Very, very disturbing. There are a lot of people online, okay, let's not forget, what is it, estimated 500,000 per day? Predators online who are actively online seeking out this type of stuff. Yes, there are a lot of people that mean well, but there are a lot of people also that don't. And those are the people you have to watch out for. And you cannot control what anybody says or does. Here's a comment. Please stop showing your daughter in videos. You can record yourself and we can hear her voice reacting. When a strawberry taste test has 50,000 likes, but the banana taste test has almost 200,000, you know it's for the wrong reason. Almost 400 likes and said exactly, why don't people get what's going on here? She doesn't care. She makes money off views. And then how else can the mom make money? Somebody commented. So there's a lot of people thinking the exact same thing. So here's the video, okay? 208,000 likes, 9,600 shares, 5,000 comments, and it is a full-on video of her eating a banana. I, I'm telling you, I would never eat a banana online as an adult. Your child should not be eating a banana online. No, this is what they look for. They look for hashtag banana. They look for child eating banana. This is what they search for, okay? You need to be aware of this stuff. If you do not know all of the perils and the pitfalls of what's going on online, then you should probably not dive into it head first and have no fucking clue. Recommended I try pickles, so today I'm gonna be trying the class and pickles. These are- You guys recommended I try pickles, she just said. You guys recommended I try pickles online. Who recommended that? They smell okay. It was very hard to swallow and it made me gag. It's very sour. Very hard to swallow made me gag. I'm sorry, but we have to talk about this kind of stuff because this is the reality of what's going on online, okay? This type of language attracts predators and people who, with nefarious motives. It's the reality of it and you need to know it and you need to be aware and you need to be informed. And these types of videos are literally kindling for those types of dangerous, dangerous people, okay? Look, 8,000 shares, hundreds of thousands of likes. It has flavor and it's very wet. It very was wet. crunchy, chewy, and kind of spicy. This is a three out of 10. Maybe I'll try another brand. 
The aftertaste was really bad and it won't go away. Stay tuned for the video that I'm doing with my mom on the weekend. Stay tuned for the video we're doing with my mom on the weekend. She, She's the one that said that. Okay, so if you don't believe me, here's a comment that I found without even having to look very hard. This is from six weeks ago. Smash, next question. As in smash or pass. Yeah, criminal to comment something like this. Disgusting, disturbing. On a child's post of her eating food. There is evidence right there. You cannot say anymore that there's no creepy people watching these videos. That is proof right there. Protect your kids. So I just wanted to bring up this article as well because this is an entire article. I think it's pretty well done by the New York Times. I'll link it down below, but it's titled A Marketplace of Girl Influencers Managed by Moms and Stalked by Men. It says seeking social media stardom for their underage daughters mothers post images of them online the accounts draw men attracted to children and they sometimes pay to see more it's an entire article basically just going into the dangers of these mommy run accounts i've been talking about this before all of these accounts that you know skirt around the rules where they say oh well it's mommy run mom runs this account mom is doing everything okay it's creepy and it's a way to circumvent the rules that are in place on these social media platforms but it's like hello think things through why are these rules in place? Oh, it's to protect your children. Yeah, it's to protect your children, but you don't care, so you get around it. So I just wanted to read this. Like many parents, Alisa, who's a mom that runs a mommy account, threatening messages about her daughter's photos, she said she protected her daughter by handling the account exclusively herself. Ultimately, she concluded, the Instagram community is dominated by disgusting creeps, but she nonetheless keeps the account up and running, shutting it down, she said, would be giving in to bullies. So this is very reminiscent, obviously, of what we read the mom type back to somebody saying, well, Hannah is very encouraged by the support, but, Yes, I do block, you know, the people that are disgusting and disturbing or I scroll past it. You know, people are so messed up. Okay, this is the truth. If you want to be online, you cannot control the comments. You cannot control who's watching your stuff. You cannot control that. That is out of your control. The only thing that you can control is what you do. So keep your kids offline is basically what that spells out. There's too many. You block one, you don't need to block a thousand. For many mom run accounts, comments from men admiring, suggestive, or explicit are a recurring scourge to be eradicated or an inescapable fact of life to be ignored. For others, they are a source to be tapped. The first thing I do when I wake up and the last thing I do when I go to bed is block accounts, said Lynn, the mother of a six-year-old girl in Florida who has about 3,000 followers from the dance world. Another mother, Gail from Texas, described being desensitized to the men's messages. I don't have much of an emotional response anymore, she said. It's weird to be so numb to that, but the quantity is just astounding. There's no end to these is the point. So this is what I have to say about all of this, okay? If you will not stop posting and if you want to continue posting, which I disagree with, vehemently, then at the very least, disable your comments because this is not right. You need to protect your child, but you're not doing that also, unfortunately, when you post these types of videos and you put your children online, you're putting them in harm's way. And I'll give you the benefit of the doubt this time because you say you're new to social media that you don't know, but this has gone on too far. These comments are disgusting. I mean, we all can read them. Your daughters become aware of it, obviously, through the podcast, the media tours, the, all of this stuff, okay? It's disturbing. A lot of people are very, very, very upset about what they are seeing. I wanna end it with this, okay? So I wanna read this comment. So I found this comment on one of Hannah's TikToks, okay? So here it is. But it says, hi, someone with ARFID here. ARFID is such a mentally taxing it causes so much emotional stress. Your child is eight. Please consider the damage that a social media presence like this can do to a child. The amount of people bullying, commented inappropriate things is disgusting. I think back to how I was as a child and I can't imagine how I would feel if my mother posted me like this. I'm sure she feels vulnerable when she eats. I know I did and I do. There are other ways to show awareness slash recovery. And she says, without showing your child's face for the sake of her mental health, please consider a new approach. That is spoken from an adult who has ARFID who is begging and pleading to please reconsider and stop posting your child online. I also want to reiterate the position I took in the beginning of the video. I am doing this for the benefit of that child and other medically complex children. That is not the way to go about spreading awareness for your kids, okay, is to exploit whatever is happening to them. I understand that most of these parents do have their kids' best interests at heart. I really do understand that. 
Okay, and I understand that there is some good that comes out of it. Some other parents, they feel less alone, or, but that is what these like private Facebook groups are for. You can talk to other parents. As long as you're sharing it from your perspective, that is fine, but there are plenty of adult accounts that share our fit awareness that will be able to spread awareness for you. If you wanna speak from your perspective and not give away a ton of information about your children, by all means, Okay, but this is not the way to do this. They are not old enough to give informed consent about, I want this online for the rest of time. They don't understand that concept that the internet is forever. They don't understand that. So all in all, I think this is scary. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe if you are new because I do tons of videos just like this one. I have many more coming that I have planned. So subscribe and like this video if you did like it. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Anna, since you didn't want the yogurt, the strawberry yogurt, how about just a plain strawberry? Uh, it's hard to bite. Man, it's cold. It hurts my teeth. Okay, well, Ow. bite through it. It's cold. You want it to be hot?